What's up? DJ Gons here. I'm going to do another tutorial. Today we are going to be talking about beat grids and how they can help in lining up your sample so that it lines up with your tempo. So I went ahead and grabbed the, it's called Mango Vocals from the Late Night R&B pack that Serato Studio has. Go and play it real quick. So you can hear how it sounds like. And again, if you want to audition something, you can always do this library preview and it has its own dedicated volume. So I put that into the track. So to test it out. Right now there's no grid like assigned to it. So I'm gonna click on this metronome right here to turn it on and see if it matches here. As you can tell, it's not right on time. So this would be an instance that where we would actually start working with the grid editor feature. And also what I like to do is have something else besides the metronome helping me. So I used, for this example, the 2X straight hat from 41 Beats. Shout out to 41. And I did it halftime. Um, normally, it'll be a little bit faster. As you can tell with this one, it's the sample is hitting on point. And then also I put a kick in there as well, just so I have something besides the metronome. Sometimes for me personally, the metronome just kind of drives me crazy. But for this demonstration, I'm going to keep all three of them on, um, but you can use whatever you want to help you with your, your grid editing. So the first question is going to be, how the hell do I get to this grid editor deal? I'm going to go to cancel here. So normally you're going to have, you know, your sample set up with all the chops and everything. Now, once you move your cursor over, you're going to see this over here show up. This is a freeze feature where it just stays in one area. You can zoom in and adjust that without the playhead as far as this not moving, even though you see the playhead going across. Unfreezing means it follows the playhead right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to grid, click on grid. Now you get these grid lines showing up. But what I'm doing, I'm going to clear them all out. When we played it, it was definitely off. What we're going to do is when you have everything clear, usually by default, it will set grid lines for you the minute you um, set grid start or when you bring a sample in, it'll be normally in there. You'll get lucky. Um, I would say about 90% of the times it'll make the grid lines on point and it'll match things up. Right now, we can tell it's off. So for this example, I'm going to go all the way to the beginning. Most important thing to do is get the downbeat straight. If you don't find the downbeat correctly, that's where you're going to run into issues. The sample is pretty easy in the fact that the downbeat is right at the beginning. So what we're going to do is this playhead right here, you have to make sure that you line it up where you need to place the grid or like the, the grid line. If you're not paying attention, and you like have this chop point right here and then you hit set it's setting the first grid here and you're going to be like oh what the heck i thought i said it right but you were looking at this instead of the actual number one and again you can do command z to get rid of that and the reason i say that is because i've done that before so that's um 
just a little tip for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit grid start. And there is the start of our grid right there. After that, it'll set all these other grid lines after the fact. So now we just check to see if this is matching. And that is pretty on point. Now what you'll do is if you want to lock this section into place like this one, two, three, four, two. I move the playhead right to that point. And then I hit set. Don't hit set grid start because you're going to tell this to be one. We're going to hit set here. So now we have this one and this one there. So that hit kind of felt like it was a little late. But two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three. That's like it's actually on point. I want to hit set right here. Two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three. So that one, it looks about right, but I, I want to kind of try it here. I think the, that first beat is here. So I'm going to move this to there. Now you did see these move because they're trying to line themselves up. But if you really notice when I move these, these don't move because I set my actual set points or my uh, set grid markers right here and here. So these are kind of like permanently in this area. Four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. So actually it was right. I'm going to purposely move this over here and you're going to tell, you're going to notice that's going to be off. Cause it's trying to stretch that audio for how I pulled that, which you could come up with cool, cool ideas with that. But, um, again, uh, just try to make sure your timing's on point with your track. So I'm going to move this for, Actually, where that chops is at. Let's try it again. Two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. So I think, I think it's on point there. So what I'm gonna do is move this playhead, zoom in. I'm gonna move it just a little bit slightly right there. Hit set. Now I have that. That's it right there. And I think we got it. So once you have all of this, what you're going to do is hit save. And by default, it tells you like what that sample BPM is. That's why you had this mango vocal. This is 94, even though we are in uh, 120. So if you do double click and change this, it'll definitely move these grid markers around too. Just think, you know, that could happen. I'm going to hit save. Now it has that saved. I'm going to take the metronome off. So now if I lower the tempo or make the tempo faster, everything should still stay locked in together. So if I'm being really, really picky, I might actually move this grid a little more this way. It's like a slightly off near the end for my personal taste. 
right there. So I might bring this over a little bit. Which actually, I, I did the opposite effect. I'm going to move this more this way. Again, it's going to be a lot of trial and error. Now that might be a little bit too much because it like abruptly stops near the end. So go back. Actually, I should have. You know what? Let me move this more right there. Maybe originally where it was. But again, we just tried things out. bit more Also, if you feel like it's ending a little too abruptly, you could always add reverb to the end of it just to fill in that little gap right there, like that little space. And that is how you mess with using grids. I know it can be a little bit daunting at first, but... um. Sardo does a pretty good job as far as like trying to really line up samples. But if you do run into that issue, again, go to grid. First, set your main grid points. Definitely for that, if you're not used to um, counting or, or trying to get the, the bars in place without the metronome, definitely turn the metronome on. If you can't stand the sound of the metronome, just add a kick or a clap or a snare. Like with this one, I just went to kick, did fill in, did one quarter. So it'll place it on every actual beat. So I have something to reference to. Again, so that is how you how you use edits, or not edits, my bad. How to fix grids or use the grid editor, I mean. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up here on YouTube or on, on my IG at, at DJGons123. Keep creating, keep having fun. Peace.